On this episode of Purposely Curious, we discuss some very controversial songs which I wanted to look further into after our last episode on rock and roll's groupies. Some songs were singles for these artists which stirred public opinion at the time and now as we rediscover these songs, the question is why would they record this? It's a touchy subject, so be warned. Also, I did not say the word and when I adamantly told Leone I did, so my apologies Leone. So get nice and cozy as this episode starts now. Hello, Leone. Greetings, Mary. How are you? I'm good. You said greetings. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> no, actually, actually, you misheard. I said season's greetings, Mary. How are you? Did you really? I did. Season's greetings? Yeah. Oh, my God. I only heard <laughs> greetings. <laughs> so did I. <laughs> Wait, are you messing with me? Of course I am. Okay. <laughs> now I got to listen to this back because I know truth- I feel like... I, I didn't say it. No, the truth is season's greetings, Mary. <laughs> season's greetings. It's like we're approaching How the holidays, I, you know? We are. And I'm excited. Um, do you have any ho- like holiday decor up? I know you, last time you said you, you weren't going to do it. Yeah, I'm so torn because I really want to decorate my friend's house that I house it, you know? There's a lot of beautiful space, you know, to do a lot of cool things there. Mm-hmm. And then probably going to help my sister decorate her new house, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's about it, I think, you know. But yeah, I'm a, I'm a real sucker for like Christmas decorations, you know? Yeah, so am I. I'm like, I don't, I don't know what it is. It It just brings me like warm feelings, you know, like, you know, holiday spirit. You know, just thinking of, you know, family and friends and just, you know, the holiday, you know, it's, it's, of course we don't get snow here or anything like the East coast or other countries, you know, but it's, there's just something about looking at lights and ornaments and like mistletoe and, you know, wreaths and just, I don't know. I really get into that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I think most people do. I mean, I'm sure there's a few grumpy Grinches out there. (laughs) <laughs> but I definitely, definitely enjoy it. So let me ask you this. Do you find it weird that, or are you one of those people that like to test people who after Halloween are okay playing Christmas music, putting Christmas stuff up, or you don't care? I don't care. And the reason for that is I think I look back to last year. I don't know if you remember last year, I think people needed like, you know, the distraction so our local, you know, radio station here in LA, um, what is it, KOST, Coast 103.5, they, they started to play Christmas music, which they do 24-7. They started to play it early, I think right after Halloween, and people were kind of mixed. They were kind of like, oh, it's too soon, and what are they doing, you know? And and I was just like, you know what, I think we kind of need that, you know, kind of, I mean, kind of need that spirit, that that, you know. Because a lot of mm-hmm. people were in isolation and, you know, missing their families and friends and loved ones and all that, you know. Um, personally, I don't. Um, I used to be one where I was thinking, okay, let's let's get through Thanksgiving first. And then, like, the day after Thanksgiving, what is that, uh, Black Friday, people, uh, you know, shopping and all that. Like, I'm totally cool with Christmas, like, crazy everything, you know. But now it just gets a little bit, it gets a little bit earlier, you know. Yeah, I'm all for it. Let's and, uh, bring on Christmas right after <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> right. <laughs> I just love, um, and you know, we were just chatting briefly about Disneyland and, and it's one of the places on earth and, you know, they definitely have what they call the Disney magic, especially for the holidays. I love that they, you know, decorate like crazy for Christmas. I mean, if you've never been uh, to Disneyland during Christmas time, it's the best time to go because it's so beautiful and, um, They actually, like, observe, like, pretty much all the religious holidays, you know? Like, they will, you will see things for Hanukkah, you will see things in January. That's why the the holidays lights don't end till January, I don't know what it is, 8th or something? Because they even celebrate the three wise kings, you know? So they they go through all the different, you know, religious uh, holidays, Kwanzaa, you know, that happen, you know, during December and and January. But they really do it big time, and it's totally, it, it just gets me in that really good mood, holiday spirit, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, it's a place I love. I mean, not just because I have fond memories as a kid. You know, my parents could not afford to take us because it was so expensive. So we maybe would go like maybe once a year, you know. 
And of course, now all my friends have annual passes. So they go like every week or two, you know. Um, but during the holidays, it's a beautiful place to be. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be going soon. So it should be. I've never been around holiday time. So I'm looking forward to seeing what you've told me. Oh, how they beautiful. decorate. So I'm and excited. I'm going to send you because they have it. They have it. They post it every year. A holiday food guide. They have one for like Halloween and they have one for like the holidays, you know? So I'm going to send it to you because mm -hmm. it's got like a million things to try in all the yeah. various restaurants and eateries and bakeries and everything. And um, usually, like, you know, they have chefs that tinker with certain things and they try new things, new recipes, and usually it's pretty good, you know? So, um, yeah. So I'll send it to you. So when you go, you have uh, many, many options for food. Um, yes, I'm going to pig out. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> You'll definitely be walking it off, so no worries there, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, every time I go, we walk 14 miles, 15 miles, not even joking. Yeah, I believe you. Yeah, so. Oh, man. Yeah, and I don't know, I'm sure you've heard uh, about Britney Spears. Yes. Yeah, so she was finally freed uh, to an extent. Um, we did an episode more than a year ago about the Free Britney movement and how some people were, you know, young, brand new lawyers who knew the basic law but started reading public records and right. seeing all the shady stuff. So I'm not going to go too much into it um, just because everyone's talking about it. But basically, when she started to say, I'm not going to perform, which we mentioned in that one episode, um, the, her PR people, who again, we all know now, looking back, which we in the movement who were considered conspiracists, right? Right. Said she was being, you know, manipulated and everything that their, her people were putting out was not her. We've, long story short, right? When she said, I'm, when she got a whiff of the whole Free Britney, she saw a chance. And there must have been people around her that were on her side. The point is, she said, I'm not going to do Vegas. I'm stopping here and you can't make money off of me. Eventually, her doc her conservator lawyer, Sam Ingram, started to semi-advocate for her after years of not advocating for her, um, started to op you know talk on her behalf. And that's how she was able to say her piece um, in June which is one that I also read, um, where she basically said what all of us already knew in the legal documents. Right. Um, but the biggest takeaway from this all is that she, because she spoke up, because there was outcry, because now people were listening to conspiracy theorists, Britney, free Britney movement, who were reading the legal documents, right? Who were saying, hey, how did you say she had dementia 13 years ago, right? And yet she's still alive and walking and you know what I mean? Like the yeah. average age for someone with Alzheimer's dementia where they can have that can be, you know, 10, 15 years before they pass from it, you know? Right. Um, long story short, I, I don't, I don't want to get carried away is there's going to be a lot of criminal civil cases and there's going to be so much political shift with conservators. Cause remember, even I told you medications will mess you up. Right. And they were giving her medications without her having a say. They gave her lithium, who drugs you up and fucks you up, yep. you know. Um, but I did want to read something that someone tweeted. Uh, her name is True Stories About Me. And what she said is, now that Britney Spears is free, she's inevitably going to do something weird and off-putting because she was in a long-term traumatic situation with very little control of her life. And getting your shit together is hard in the best of times, and that does shit to a person. And I'm genuinely afraid the public who has been rooting for her for so long is going to turn on her and even start questioning whether or not it's good for her to be free of the conservatorship. And people are going to need to remember that the answer to that question is unequivocally yes. So to, I sent you a video where she finally... She posted on her IG where she sounds very lucid in what she's saying. Right. And so now she has control over Instagram, which she did not in legal documents, you know. But again, her the media is still being fed certain things. Everything is public record. So I'm really happy for her. It's going to be a hard few years. 
But I do believe there's going to be change because there will be criminal cases, stuff that we talked about. And there's going to be change in that sector because there's a lot of fraud. Um, yes, a lot of people do need it with disability, but there is a lot of people that are being taken advantage of. And that's across the board in every state. So I know there's going to be a political shift with this sector. So congratulations to Brittany. Yes. <laughs> wish her well. You, wish her well. We do. And it's going to be hard. You saw how much, you know, we all struggled with COVID and being in quarantine. She was locked up for 13 years. Yes. Couldn't talk to her friends. Yeah. You know, everything was background checked, right? Everyone was, you know, anyways, we've had documentaries now. Just everyone feels comfortable speaking up. They're saying the hell with the contracts where I can't say anything. I'm going to speak up. And so the domino started falling almost a year, two years ago. Now it's just going to snowball. So anyway. Yeah. I just, you know, I know she's going to probably need like a lifetime of therapy, you know, just to get past yeah. this and function normally. I mean, just think about it. Normal people, with normal careers, you know, I've known some of them have been on therapy for 20 years, you know, and it's helped them, you know, get through certain things in life or, you know, issues they're dealing with from their past or whatever. And that's just a normal person with like no big issues, you know, considering she was held captive, almost a prisoner, you know, from the she world. She was, not almost. She was. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, almost as in literally as in like, you know, like might as well been, you know. <laughs> um, she was. You know, it's, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, she looks strong and is talking big, strong, but it's like, you know, you can talk a big talk in front of the cameras, but what happens behind closed doors, you know, she's got a lot to deal with and yeah, she's not going to trust hopefully, anyone. you know, hopefully she gets that help and you know, and she will that... get the help. Yeah. She is going to get the help. Um, that's one thing that they said is that they're putting now that she has control of it you know the lawyer is going to be in the loop and overseeing stuff it's just they she, she i'm so glad the thing too is that the even the the judge is going to get in trouble in this because there there was stuff that she said and when she terminated it that people are now saying well why if she had that power why didn't she do that back then so it's a lot there's going to be a lot of head rolling so but we wish her well um and I'm sure it's going to be hard many years of her trying to recapture. And she's going to make mistakes just like all of us do. So people, that's why I read that tweet, because people need to understand that she's going to, you know, she hasn't been able to handle anything. She couldn't paint her kitchen, you know what I mean? So she's going to do shit, but now she's not going to be on the medications that they're forced upon her, you know? So you guys should watch Black Mirrors with uh, Miley Cyrus. Yeah. <laughs> That and you know we can't forget that she's also engaged and you know don't yeah know, I don't we know if, if we don't know if that's exactly the right move for her or not you know it's not I don't trust him and a no. lot of people don't trust him right yeah so but who, we know, who are we to judge I mean all I, I hope is that you know she can truly see if that's the right person for her because you know the last thing she needs is yeah. another messed up marriage you know yeah. But, you know, we know people who aren't under conservators who fucking get married three, four, five times. So if that's what she needs to do, then that's what she needs to do. Just get a prenup, Brittany. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you know. No, I, I know what her, you're saying. I, I know what you're on. saying. I want to see her move You know, if she doesn't sing or dance anymore, that's cool. I want to see her move yeah. on and, you know, become a spokesperson, you know, for these type yeah. of issues in life. Become a, you know, role model. Go out there, you know, interface with people. Yeah. You know, like that's what I want to see is move, her move on. So, but if if we're not going to see that because somebody's holding her down, then it's like fuck, she's back to square one. You know. Yeah. Well, let's not be so pessimistic. I think it'll it'll be good, but she is going to make mistakes. And I, you know, I just hope people are nice about it when she makes them because we're all human. Yeah, she just needs a good team now going forward. You know, lawyer, lawyers aside, she's going to need new managers, new assistants, a good solid team of people that are, you know, working for her best interests. Yes, this is true. So I want to go into our subject of the day. It is about inappropriate songs. Now, Ooh. 
Yes. So this episode idea came due to our previous episode when we talked about the most famous groupies and how a lot of the groupies were really, really young. Right. And I discussed, you know, Iggy Pop's uh, music where he had a song where he claimed to have slept with one of the ones we spoke about when she was only 13. Right. And so her name is Sable Star. We had already heard rumors or people already at the time had heard rumors that she had hooked up with um, Iggy Pop, but uh, it wasn't, no one realized how young she was, right? Right. So the song is called Look Away, which actually, um, the song starts off by saying, I slept with Sable when she was 13. Her parents were too rich to do anything. She rocked her way around LA till a New York doll carried her away. This song is on his 1996 album called Naughty Little Doggy. And it's like the last track and I listened to it on that album and I was like, it's kind of like, why would you fucking write that? Like, <laughs> right. But yeah, he literally, those are the lyrics. And so when we, when I heard the song on the last um, previous episode that we discussed, I was, came to realize a lot of these um, artists sometimes write openly about this subject and so i thought we'd go over some of them so do you know any off the top of your head that discuss inappropriate stuff like this inappropriate stuff not just with minors but just in general right yeah 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 um i know and, and this one I, I know personally because the guy in the band um actually um confirmed it for me um Oh my gosh, the 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 artist the band is Little Richard. Remember Little Richard? Mm -hmm. He passed away. I think it was in twenty twenty. Um, he wrote a song called Tutti Fruity. Remember the song Tutti Fruity? You ever heard of the song Tutti Fruity? Yeah. Do you know the songs the song's about? No, I never really paid attention. <laughs> um. So rumor, mind you, this song. Oh my, I don't even know what year this song came out. Maybe in the. 50s or 60s it's 57 it actually came out in 1957 so little richard's original drummer is he was a friend of mine he passed away this, this this earlier this year he was a friend of mine he was up there in age but uh i met him while working in radio super just the nicest guy you know and a rumor came up one day that the song was about something naughty and i'm like no the song is tutti frutti Tutti Fruity, oh Rudy, Tutti Fruity, oh Rudy, wop up a loo bump, la bump, you know, and and I and I and I asked them one day, I go, hey, I have to ask you this because I heard that the song is about something sexual, and he's like, oh, he's like, you're right, he's like, you're totally right, and I'm like, what is it about? He's like, oh, it's about anal sex. And oh my god! <laughs> I'm like what? Cover your ears, children. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, are you? I'm like, I just like, you know, because the, the lyrics don't show that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but he told me the story. He says, yes, the the lyrics are changed slightly, but the meaning is still there. Yeah. You know, there's, there's a part of the song like, I got a gal, I got a gal named Daisy. She almost drive me crazy. Got a gal named Daisy. She almost drive me crazy. She knows how to love me. Yes, indeed. Boy, you don't know what she's what you do to me. And there was a second part of that verse that that describes it in detail. I'm not going to mention it here, but, and they had to cut it out because he was so, he, you know, Richard, little Richard was flamboyant. He was crazy for that time. He was like the Marilyn Manson of the fifties, you know, mm -hmm. like all we know him is like, oh, he was the famous, you know, piano player, singer, you know, no, no. Back in the fifties, he was wild. So mm -hmm. I didn't know that, and and he confirmed it for me. So I was like, "Holy shit! I I never knew. this is a rock and roll history song, and nobody ever knew that it was about you know about sex." You know, I was like, "Oh yeah. damn, yeah." Um, but I got I got a good life out of that because here's a eighty something year old man, you know, telling me the story, and I'm like, "This is crazy." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ew. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I gotta yeah the, the, the lyrics that are missing are more descriptive trust me yeah i believe you <laughs> <laughs> have you heard of kisses christine 16 kisses christine 16 no 
So the lyrics are, I don't usually say things like this to girls your age, Christine, 16. But when I saw you coming out of school that day, I knew, I knew I've got to have you. Oof. Written by Gene Simmons when he grew infatuated with a 16-year-old. Kiss actually released it as a single, uh, and but it was controversial. And so for obvious reasons, radio stations didn't want to play it. And those that did would play it after 7 p.m. Just out there. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And then I also found one of the Rolling Stones. Have you heard of the Stray Cat? Yes. Stray Cat Blues. Yes. So the lyrics say, there'll be a feast if you just come upstairs, but it's no hanging matter. It's no capital crime. I can see that you're 15 years old. No, I don't want your ID. And then he repeats it. This song was released in 1969. That's crazy. So he wants her to go upstairs and it's no, I don't know. But yeah, again, <laughs> these are big, big bands. That's so openly crazy. writing about it. Yeah. Now, do you, you know the famous Neil Diamond? Yes. Sweet Caroline. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I'm gonna, well, this one wasn't too bad, but you know the song, You'll Be a Woman Soon? Yes. So it says, girl, you will be a woman soon. Please come take my hand. Girl, you'll be a woman soon. Soon you'll need a man. Well, I finally found what I'm looking for, but if they get the chance, they'll end it for sure. Wow. It's up to you, girl. And when I, you know, I, I listened to this and read the lyrics more than once, I said, I feel like it's almost like he's conditioning this young girl to not say anything because if they find out, they'll surely stop it. Right. Yeah. But if you listen to the song, it sounds so romantic. But this motherfucker, oh, excuse me. Is, it sounds like he's conditioning. <laughs> I'm like censoring myself. But do, I don't know. I mean, am I looking too much into this? No. It's, I mean, it's scary that, you know, like, like it makes you wonder, like, who are you fantasizing about? Or is this real? Like, who are you with? You know? Yeah. And it's crazy, too, because um, the Gene Simmons one, it, they openly talked about that he got infatuated with a 16 year old. So that one's definitely for sure. Yeah. Um, and I'm assuming that a lot of these, just like the song you described, they're insp inspired by people or situations right right yeah like iggy pop why would you write that like why i mean right. they just obviously don't care nothing seems to happen to them but you know i was, yeah. I was surprised that do you know what the police song i was because you know I'm, I'm a big fan of the police um with you know sting and nanny summers and you know did you, you ever heard the song where the police don't stand don't stand so close to me no, I don't think I've heard it. Oh, it's a it's a very popular um, uh, police song. Inside the lyrics, um, in, the lyrics inside him, there's longing. This girl's an open page book marking. She's so close now. This girl is half his age. Mm. And when was the song released? That would that would have been eighties, um, early eighties or late seventies maybe, when the police yeah. were still together. Because now it's just staying, oh, so he was you know? young. They were yeah. young, but still, it's like. Oof, you know <laughs> yeah um have you heard of the song alabama song by the doors from 1967 yes i know the song so apparently people feel that where he says oh show me the way to the next little girl oh don't ask why just show me the way Oof. yeah they're not sure i mean i i don't know what he was referring to um because i tried to listen to it in context with the rest of the lyrics so i wasn't sure what it was kind of, you know, they they have weird songs. So, but this is what people flag as a issue. Right. Now, how about Aerosmith? Yes. I'm trying to think of, I know there's one that was controversial. Was it the one with Run DMC? Um, Walk This Way, was it? Uh, Yes. But the, the version is not the Run DMC one. That's like a remix, right? Right. Yeah. So yes, it was Walk This Way. And so in the song, I listened to it and he repeats it like three, four times. He says, I met a cheerleader. She was 
was a real young bleeder. All the times I can, uh, oh, re- is it reminisce? Because the best things of loving was, wait, I cannot read my writing. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're funny. Oh my God. <laughs> Major fail here. Oh my God, <laughs> Becky, look at her butt. I know, this is terrible. Is that what I sounded like? No. <laughs> oh. I was just imagining that's what you should sound like. Oh my God. I was like, oh my God, is that what I sounded like? Anyways. Oh my God, um, <laughs> so he talks about like being with the little kids, the best love in was the sister and the cousin. And then he, he talks about going to school and I'm kind of paraphrasing it because I really got really sloppy here <laughs> towards the end of this. <laughs> and he says, with your, in the school, with your feet flying up in the air, singing, hey diddle with the kitty in the middle. Oof. While her legs are up in the air. Is it, oh, anyway. Why is he in high school? <laughs> with a cheerleader. <laughs> with her know. feet in the, up in the air. <laughs> I don't know. But, but wow. Yeah, so it was Walk This Way. I don't know. I always think of Run DMC. Um, that version? Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy, too, because I remember watching the music video, but I was really young. MTV was on, I was at my cousin's house, and I remember seeing, we were like hip hop type fish. We would watch like hip hop R&B music videos, and I remember that being in rotation. Right. And I thought it was odd, but you know, then I just, I didn't listen to the lyrics, obviously. I was young. Right. So, but yeah, there, so was there a, you go. There was a Beatles song mm-hmm. that, and this one kind of made me think a little bit, and I don't approve. I mean, I still don't approve, obviously. Oh, I I saw her standing there. You know, the Beatles song. Um, the lyrics pretty much say, well, she was just 17. You know what I mean? And it's like, oof. Mm-hmm. I'm still like, why, why are they writing, you know? I mean, obviously they were young, right? Still even, I don't know what, how old they were when they started the Beatles, but still. Um, one thing I always have to remind myself and not that, look, I don't, I don't approve. Okay. But still up until recently, or there probably still are states here in the United States where the age of consent is what, 17 or 16, right? Mm-hmm. Which is mm-hmm. really weird to me. Like at those ages, they can consent to sex or marriage or whatever, you know? And I think cause we're so used to, I mean, we live in California. And we're so used to like, oh, 18, eight, you're an adult, you're 18, 18, you know, can't mm-hmm. drink till you're 21, 21, you know? Yeah. But in these other states, I don't know where they are in the Midwest or the South or the East Coast South, I don't know. It's just weird that it's 16 or 17. And when I look at these lyrics, I'm like, well, going back to 1965 or 68 or whatever, when the Beatles sort of started, you know, I guess it makes sense, you know, mm-hmm. but still it's like, yeah. It's just creepy, you know? Yeah. Like, why Why are they specifying a young underage girl? At the time, it might not have been underage, but to today's standards, it is clearly, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then um, there was also the song 17 by Foreigner, and the lyrics kind of sounded like what you mentioned, um, which is where he says, when you grow older, you'll remember what I told you, girl. 17, you're just 17. Well, she was just 17, if you know what I mean. <laughs> it seems like it's the magic number. So girls out there, if you're 17, you two can hook up with a rock star. Not today. <laughs> like back in the 60s, maybe, or 70s. But that seems to be the magic number, right? It keeps coming up over and over again. 13, 16, 15, 17, Ugh, 17. Just too young. Yeah. What the hell? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell seriously i mean if these guys were that age at the time i'd be like i get it you're 18 you're close enough in age i can see you you're making some sexualized innocence reference you know but it's like no you know these rock star guys were in their 20s already you know mm-hmm. probably most of them i'm sure yeah yeah and some probably older yeah I mean, it's just crazy but, you know, we like we discussed in the last episode, a lot of the times, you know, the girls were all about this life. They didn't want necessarily a relationship with these stars. That that was just their goal was to sleep with them, you know. Yeah. So 
it's uh i think i talked about uh motley foo motley crew <laughs> <laughs> motley fools yeah <laughs> i pity the motley fools the, the, the chole the cholo versions <laughs> the cholo versions <laughs> I'm I'm not my I'm not with it today. <laughs> You're listening to the Motley Fool. No, well there is the Motley Fool, <laughs> which is um uh, I listen to these advice. podcasts. They're, yes, so I, that's why I got confused. <laughs> but anyways, what what I saw in some of these interviews with that you know even Gene Simmons. Um, the lead singer of Motley Crue, they basically said that no, there's Gene an under kiss, kiss. No, no, I know. But then I said, and the lead singer. Oh, yes. Of the, uh, yes. Vince I Neil. do know that much, but I keep forgetting the lead singer's name. Vince Neil. Yes. Thank you. Yes. When you go back and listen to it, you'll see that I'm correct and that I did say, and. No, you did. <laughs> I'm just deaf. You, no. I have tinnitus, not. so I hear weird shit. <laughs> I love you too, Mary. But, um. <laughs> but what they basically <laughs> said was, you know, in, in all these interviews that I was watching with that, it, there's an understanding that it is completely what it is in, out, boom, they're right. done. And that's, and they even say the girls want it too. So it's not like they don't kind of in these interviews. Now these are interviews back then, you know, right. like now they wouldn't talk about it, I'm sure. But I just thought it was really interesting. And so that kind of sparked my need to want to hear some of these songs and be like, oh my God, they a lot of these songs were actual singles, you know, and it were actual hits and they're straight up talking about, you know, inappropriate stuff that I, I guess maybe me at my age finds it inappropriate. Mm -hmm. um, but I thought it would be interesting to discuss. So do you know of any other songs? Those are the ones I was able to find. There's a big 80s dance song music uh, by The Knack. The song is called My, 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 my Sharona. Never gonna mm. stop, give it up. Such a dirty mind, I always get it up for the touch of the younger kind. Mm. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, yeah. So I'm just finding out this, and I've heard it, and probably tilting my head to it at a club or something. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I'm just now listening to the lyrics. Wow. Okay. <laughs> That's the thing too. I think we just listen to like the chorus or like the famous bits of it. Right. And we don't necessarily listen to the entirety of the song. So, I mean, I'm, there's a lot of genres. Like, I just kind of stuck to, like, rock for the most part. But right. when I started looking into it more, I was like, there's definitely in it, all the genres. Um, but these were kind of, like, the most famous ones that I guess people would probably know or remember hearing. And so you might look at the band differently or you might not. Right. Who knows? I know I see them differently. Um in the sense that, you know, I just was naive and didn't really pay attention, I guess. <laughs> I always think, you know, when this kind of conversations come up, I always think of when I was a kid. I don't know if I ever told you I played piano for 10 years. Um, when I was, no, I didn't know that. Yeah, when I was, uh, like, from the age 8 to 18, I played. Um, and, like, once I started to, because, you know, you get bored playing classical music, you know. Mm -hmm. And I used to tell my piano teacher, I want to learn some, like, rock and roll, some, like, 50s stuff and all that. So he's like, oh, how about some Jerry Lee Lewis, you know. And I didn't know too much about his life, you know? And then, of course, mm -hmm. now as an adult, I'm like, I find out that, oh, he's one of the founding fathers of rock and roll because, you know, he went on tour with Elvis Presley and um, Johnny Cash and June Carter. You know, they were part of that foursome, you know, that they were like the, the pioneers of rock and roll back in the day, you know? This is mm -hmm. 1955, you know? And he was crazy guy on the piano. He used to play the piano. He used to bang on it with his feet. He used to do crazy shit, you know? And... I used to idolize him. I used to be like, fuck, this dude's amazing. I used to, I used to like play his songs and you know, great balls of fire, you know, all the fun songs he used to play. And then of course I find out as an adult that he married his underage cousin. Wow. Who was 15. Wow. Or something like, like she was younger than 16, like 15 or 14. And I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm like, what, what is wrong with people? Like, you know? Yeah. And I, I think he's, I think he's still alive. I'm not sure, but he was at least a few years ago. And, and I'm just thinking, God, you could have had any woman in the world and nope, had have been your underage cousin. I'm like, oh God, that's so creepy. Yeah. Yeah. 
And it's crazy because now, you know, a lot of people talk about conditioning and all that stuff. Yeah. And it kind of reminded me of that Neil Diamond song where he says, you know, if people find out, they're surely going to stop it, you know? And I'm like, right. oh my God, this sounds like he's trying to condition this young girl. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I will not be singing that song anymore. Sweet Caroline. Oh, after now, after now, beginning now. <laughs> No, no, right now. Hold me to it if you if I, if I end up catching myself singing it. <laughs> I'll be like, what uh, are you doing? I know. You were like, didn't you just say you weren't going to sing this song anymore? I wish, you I know. I forget a lot of things. Because th there's a lot of these guys. Well, no, there's very few of these guys still left who are alive, you know? I'm mm -hmm. talking about the OG ones, like from the 50s and 60s, you know? Mm -hmm. And, like, if it was, like, imagine if they had good memories, right? If they had a good, like, if they were lucid and, you know, they were able to have good conversations, good memories and all that. Like, I would love to know, like, what were you guys thinking? Like, what was, like, what was the mentality like around the world or America? Like, how was this, how did the record labels, because you guys signed work like to Columbia Records, CBS Records, big people, right? And mm -hmm. how did they approve this? Like, how did they say, oh, yeah, that's fine, no problem, you know? Yeah, that would be interesting. Like, today, none of that shit would fly. <laughs> No, like, I mean, if it's an independent, you know, independent label, maybe, but definitely the bigger ones are probably trying to save face and, you know, have PR yeah. people now. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, but yeah, those are the songs that I found. Um, so I thought we should do an episode on these songs that are kind of inappropriate and I, if you guys have any songs you want to share, please message me on Instagram. I always want to hear these and be like, oh, that face of shock, like, I cannot believe it, you know. But, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> I like to stress myself out, you know. <laughs> <laughs> There's one I have to mention because I, yeah. I just watched his, um, he did a performance on YouTube, like, not that long ago from his home studio. And it was pretty rocking. Um, Billy Idol. From the 80s, big 80s icon, Billy Idol. Do you mm -hmm. know what song I'm thinking of? No, I wasn't a fan. You were not a fan. Um, Mary. <laughs> Usually that's when you what you say when I say no. <laughs> no, you get the meltdown when it's movies, not music. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, oh, she's naive, whatever. But <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, no, uh, Billy Idol has a song called Cradle of Love. Rock mm. the cradle of love. Rock the cradle of love. Yes, the cradle of love. Don't rock easy. It's true. And I'm like, ooh, I wonder, what, what were you doing with that song? Yeah. Like, it's pretty obvious. <laughs> cradle meaning young, you know? You, you think so? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but again, it's like, you know, we're, we're you know, who are all these groupies, you know? I mean... You know, again, were they about the groupies, you know? Mm-hmm. So I don't know. It's just, it fascinates me, but it's sickening at the same time. It's just one of those things where it's like, ugh, that's just, I can't listen to that song in the same way, like, you know? Yeah. Like you were, like you were mentioning, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty interesting. And, you know, like, again, it, things were accepted back then more than they are so now right um even if it's consensual people go to jail if they're 17 and a half you know so it seems like it was more accepted um when i was looking into this i also saw elvis had a thing for younger age minors um I mean, Pr priscilla was it priscilla yeah. presley yeah she was underage um so it's definitely i think it was accepted it was normal people look the other way um but There's i definitely if artists tried that now i don't think it would fly there's a really cool story um about elvis he dated he dated uh, one of the biggest horror icons out there do you know who i'm thinking of no <gasps> is yes. does she just have a memoir yes and where she said you know she's been she has a beautiful partner yes a female and she finally came out yes oh my god yes yes elvira <laughs> mistress of the dark yes do when, tell so and and she i mean she told the story on my podcast um you know when, she has a podcast no on my podcast oh you guys had her on yeah yeah how did i miss this okay it's an old episode it's like two or three years old now um oh okay 
she came in the studio for that and I heard the story. I heard like tidbits about the story and apparently she left, she was from, I believe it was Kansas, Kansas or Oklahoma. She was in one of those states. And uh, by the way, do you know that she's a part of medical history? Um, no. Because you know what she looks like, right? I'm, I'm talking about her her, yes. um, her character, Elvira, right? Yes. She's wearing what? like A wig? Well, yeah, she's wearing a wig, but I mean the clothing. Like, <laughs> Oh, the black dress. Yes, the black. And what did what what did the what does the dress reveal? Her bosom. And what else? A small waist. Uh, no, I mean more, more like her legs, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> but did you know that seventy five percent of her body's burned? No. Yes. Uh-uh. Yeah, it's a crazy story. When she grew up in, I think I don't know what, whatever it was, Oklahoma or Kansas, whatever. She was a young girl. It was like, I think Easter time, if I remember correctly, I think she reached a boiling pot of water and it fell on her and it burned 75% of her body. Now, the medical history part is she is one of the first patients to try an experimental drug called penicillin. The antibiotic? Yeah. How crazy is that? Yeah. Wait. Okay. Yeah. Like, that's, that's so weird. Like, you know, you're, you know, she was young and they're trying to, you know, stop the infection and all that stuff whatever you know anyways but yes she told a great story that uh she came out to vegas and dated elvis and she was 17 and Mm. elvis is the one who told her get out of vegas like because she wanted to be a showgirl like you know you know the um the like the top of the showgirls that do the fancy you know fancy costumes and all that stuff you know Mm -hmm. and elvis Give, she said, Elvis gave me the best advice ever. And he told me, get out of here. You belong in Hollywood. You belong making movies or being a personality. Like, you're so funny. You're so talented. Get out of here. And she took his advice and she left. Yeah. And she left Vegas and she came out to, you know, California. The crazy thing is she tells a story that to get to Vegas, her parents had a sign and everything. And they did. Because her parents, you know, she, the parents were supportive. And, you know, because... She wanted to be a dancer on stage, you know, these showgirl type shows, you know, and, but yeah, it was Elvis that pretty much, you know, told her to come to Hollywood, which she did. And she did two things, um, three things. She, she was, she went to the famous Gremlins, um, comedy circuit, you know, where all the big time famous comedians go. And she became, uh, she was a graduate of that. And two, she started on a little radio station called Key Rock Radio. She was a DJ at Key Rock Radio in the eighties. And then three, she had a TV show called Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, at Macabre Theater, where she would show the horror movies and she would host it and she would do her, like, you know, her, like, dumb blonde meets valley girl, like, you know, goth, you know, persona, you know? Yeah. So that Definitely just Hall that of Famer. made her an icon, you know? And, mm-hmm. the, and the craziest thing is when that show ended after whatever it was, five seasons or whatever, like... The smartest thing she did was she fought to gain the rights to everything that is her and her own image and her name and all that. And they they gave it to her. Mm -hmm. And so she owns, you know, who she is. Yeah. Which is amazing. amazing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, crazy story, you know, underage dated Elvis. A lot of people don't know that story, but. um, Yeah. And it's definitely in her memoirs, you know. Yeah. I, I'm wondering if I'm not big on memoirs and that's one that I thought about maybe adding but i'm not totally sure i will um just because my tbr is so long um but yeah maybe i'll just call you up and be like fill me in on the rest of her life (laughs) 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 but it was one that i was debating because i i saw that she opened up about her personal life so a lot of people were like wow we didn't know this about this about her and we're so excited and ecstatic about it and um but yeah so. Yeah, it's, it's funny. No, no, none of us, nobody knew that she was dating a woman, you know, and all these mm-hmm. years. I, I just think she, I just thought she wasn't dating, period, you know. And Yeah. You know, all I know is she, had a, she has a daughter in college right now, and that's all she would talk about. She's like, oh, you know, doing my Elvira thing, and, you know, and got a girl, my little girl's in college, and, you know, whatever. And I'm like, oh, that's cool, you know. Yeah, yeah. And she's, I think, I, I believe she's 70 or will be 70, and she looks amazing. Amazing. I saw <laughs> We and, said it together. <laughs> and like I told I you, remind, just keep in mind that the black iconic dress that she wears 
only shows you the parts that were not burned. Yeah. Amazing. Which is crazy. And if you guys look up her picture, not in character, you would walk down the street and walk right by her and yes. not know it's her. Right. Because when I saw that picture when, you know, she was releasing her memoir, I was like, what? This is her? Like, yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize she was wearing a wig. Yeah. I literally did not realize it. Yeah. She's, um, I believe she's a redhead, naturally, I believe. Yeah. Very pretty. Yep. Yeah. So, anyways. Well, thank you for your info. I really enjoyed all the songs that we discussed. Well, no, let me take that back. I did not enjoy any of these songs that I listened to. <laughs> now your your earrings all messed up and no. you don't want to ever listen to these songs did, again. What I'm saying is, or what I meant to say was that it was very interesting to look into these songs. And so I'm sure there's more out there. If you guys want to share, please share. Um, and I'm looking forward to our next um episode so if you will have me again leone absolutely mary it's always my pleasure yes so thank you everyone we'll talk soon bye that was episode 77 of the purposely curious podcast make sure to subscribe on apple Podcasts, spotify and on most podcast platforms and follow us on social media at purposely curious on instagram and at purposely c pod on twitter that's purposely the letter c pod until next time you know what to do